You know, there's so many buttons I gotta push. Okay. Okay, if online audience can hear me, that'd be wonderful. Okay. Um, welcome to this Sunday um, with Gospel Lesson B in Mark chapter 9 and kind of starting our season with our youth. And okay. So, for announcements today, after the service concludes, um, I invite everybody for a short time, um, once the service ends, we'll go straight outside over to our playground boat, and we will be painting, our confirmation youth will be painting the cross on top of the boat, something we've been wanting to do for a while now. And I hope the blue is as gorgeous as we think it's gonna be. And uh, I, we are really excited about that blue color on our cross because I think it'll be quite visible, we hope, from Highway 2. And then after we do a special blessing of the cross, the youth will stay out there and sand the cross and get it prepped for painting and then we'll paint it. And confirmation will be starting up 29 September. We finally got word that um, Maple School District will be able to support dropping the kids off, which we didn't know on Wednesday night. Uh, so thanks to our school district as they provide this service to us and uh, other institutions. And we are grateful for that. And with that, I invite you to follow the call to worship as found in your bulletin. The first shall be last. We come to worship as we are. The last shall be first. Come with confidence. The first shall be last. We come with questions. The last shall be first. We come burdened by failure. The first shall be last. We come celebrating success. The last shall be first. We come fearful of the future. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first, and a little child shall lead them. Let us all pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy, selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 127. And we'll do Psalm 127, verses 1 through 3. I invite you to join me. And this psalm is entitled, God's Blessing in the Home. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guards keep watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Children are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Our gospel text today is from Mark chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Jesus again foretells his death and resurrection. The disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Who is the greatest? 
Then they came to Capernaum, and when Jesus was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? Now, whenever you hear on the way in Mark's gospel, it's about walking the road to the discipleship. What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way, they had argued with one another who was the greatest. And Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then Jesus took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and from Jesus Christ, God's only Son. Amen. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Let's be honest here. That's probably not what most of us were told or taught growing up. Certainly don't see it played out a lot so much anymore in our society. Not sure we might have heard this verse in Sunday school or even agreed upon it in principle. But then Monday comes. And I'm not talking about Monday morning quarterbacks. But Monday comes. And for most of us, I suspect, Monday's greatness is about being number one, a winner, successful. Have you ever heard of the losing Super Bowl team dancing around, shouting, we're number two, we're number two? <laughs> no, probably not, and I suspect we never will. Being last and servant of all it's not what we usually strive for. If being great and holding the number one position means being last of all and servant of all, then we have completely misunderstood what greatness is really about. And the disciples don't understand greatness any more than we do. What were you arguing about along the way, Jesus asked them. But they were silent for they had argued with one another who was the greatest. Jesus didn't get an answer to his question, only silence. And it was the guilty silence of having been caught and found out. Kind of like a kid eating a chocolate cupcake, frosted deliciously. How in the world would they ever hide the evidence of having eaten that cupcake? So you see, Jesus isn't asking though for their sake. But for theirs, Jesus already knew what they were talking about. He's not gathering information for himself, but inviting the disciples' self-reflection on what it means to be great. He's presenting the disciples with an image and the reality of becoming our better selves. And he's doing that for us. What does it mean and look like for us to be great in today's world? That's the question. Now, Jesus is not saying that we should not or cannot be great. He never says that. He's asking us to reframe our understanding of greatness. And Jesus answers that question by taking a little child in his arms. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. That doesn't sound too difficult or challenging, does it? Who won't welcome a little child? But the child in this story is a symbol for something else, and this child is a symbol of vulnerability and dependency. Now, it's hard for us to understand, I think, in many ways, this lesson Jesus is teaching. But in Jesus' day, a child had no rights, no status, no economic value. 
And although the disciples had just argued over who was the greatest, ironically, the one thing they could all agree upon, the child in Jesus' lap had absolutely no status at all. But greatness, Jesus says, is in welcoming and receiving into our arms one like that little child. Greatness is not something to be achieved or earned. It's a quality that arises within us when our lives are in balance and we are stepping into our better selves. And that's the life that Jesus offers us. And this kind of greatness happens in the simple, the ordinary, and the mundane. And more often than not, it's going to go unnoticed and unnamed. Greatness is always a choice set before us even here in very simple, ordinary, mundane, popular Wisconsin. Greatness is always a choice set before us. And here I'm going to go, for those of us who live here in Poplar, in the greater metropolis of Poplar, a very specific example. And it's about our buses. especially our buses that have to pull out from the middle school and the elementary school on Highway 2. And they now have to make a left-hand turn. And this is complicated, the whole busing situation. It's very complicated. And they put up signs now for 45 miles an hour, but they're in yellow, which I just found out. They're not in white. It's not enforceable. Ooh, I hope that doesn't go. Let me strike that comment. <laughs> Let me strike that comment. You will be arrested to the letter of the law. <laughs> Sorry. But it's complicated. And we have record number of parents because of the pandemic dropping their kids off. And so you have rush hour right now in Poplar. And our transportation director is on record for saying that we are beating the odds so far for not having an accident. And that concerns me and you all very much. We have our children on these buses. We've got grandkids. We've got neighbors' children on these buses. And I don't think I hardly know a single child in this school district that doesn't have to be bused. It's our reality. So what are we showing our children when we're not slowing down and letting buses make that left-hand turn and slowing down to 45 through there? I think Jesus had a lot of wisdom because we're all in such a hurry. What would it be like to set an example for our kids that we're willing to wait, that we are not the greatest, we don't have to be first? And that's a very specific example. And I'm going to go one more example. Um, you know about our football team, teams right now, they are doing awesome and it's been so fun to watch our high school football team and they're just rolling over their op opponents and I really hope and I do believe I must imagine that their coaches are telling them stay humble stay humble you've got tough opponents coming along don't let it go to your head and I hope that they're being servants to one another and being focused and taking care of one another What example are they learning right now in, in these years? Because Monday's greatness will tempt them and it will tempt us. But there is another greatness, the greatness of the last and the greatness of the servant of all. I wonder who the child is that Jesus will set before us. What greatness will we all choose as a community? Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Let's hope we have better Mondays ahead of us. Now, every preacher must ask every Sunday, did Jesus Christ have to die for this sermon to be preached? And I'd say probably not. It sounds like a very moralistic sermon. Slow down. Be humble. 
But when I look at the gospel text for today, what we started out was, this is the second time that Jesus has foretold his death and resurrection. The disciples are on the way. And after the second time Jesus has foretold his death and resurrection, this is the very next thing he tells the disciples. Jesus led his and us with his very life and death. And the way to greatness for Jesus, for Jesus was his lastness. His lastness even unto death. Amen. Our prayers of intercession today are based on the hymn, All Are Welcome, and the prayer response for our online community, I will say, All Are Welcome, and I invite you to respond with, All Are Welcome in This Place. All Are Welcome. All Are Welcome in This Place. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hurt hearts learn to forgive. Freed by God in Christ to live and love and serve, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's beloved creation. Gracious God, you gather congregations together by the power of your word. Bless leaders with the gifts of wisdom and discernment as they seek to make your church the community for which you long. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Creative God, all creatures sing to the goodness of the earth. Make us good stewards of our home for the generations to come. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Sovereign God, you raise up governments to protect the widow and orphan. Bless citizens with wisdom and discernment as they choose leaders to always seek the common good. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Loving God, you desire health and wholeness. Reconcile the conflicts and disputes among us. Teach us to heal the trauma of racism and poverty. Break our hearts open to all those who suffer and mourn as we name them silently in our hearts now. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Welcoming God, you place children among us. Teach us to honor the children in our midst and to pay attention to what they can teach us about who you are. All are welcome, all are welcome in this place. You surround us with a cloud of witnesses who announce the good news of abundant life to a sad and needy world. Make us a people on our way, telling the story of your <clears throat> loving kindness. All are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Amen. At this time, I invite you to share the love and peace of Christ with one another. Be well in Christ. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace. Be well in Christ. Be well in Christ. Online communities wishing us all be well in Christ. Before I start the communion liturgy for communion, um, please remain seated and uh, the communion assistants will come around with a tray, hand you the elements. Um, 
after I say body of Christ given for you, then we'll all consume the bread together, the wafer, and then when I say blood of Christ shed for you, then we'll all consume the wine together, and then in your pews you'll find little blue cups at the end, and then after that just place uh, your uh, empty uh, little glass into the blue container. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are indeed holy, almighty, merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world. Fulfill for us your holy will to show us how to be on the way. And Lord Jesus, you have accomplished all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray as we reach virtually across the internet and across, virtually across our aisle. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. Come to the banquet, for now all is ready.
body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I invite Leah to come forward. We are going to do a rite of beginning. For Leah, we'll be starting a two-year program through our synod, Northwest Wisconsin Synod. Um, without having you fall off the steps, you're coming in the camera. Awesome. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> so much. Sorry. Um, so our synod has a lay school of which Mary Jane is a graduate and Gail Sari was a graduate. And Leah is embarking on a two-year program of uh, giving up um, Friday night, 7 to 10, all through then Saturday morning through noon, um, studying systematic theology. <laughs> Bible, worship, and we are excited that Leah is embarking on this, and, and what Leah is wearing uh -huh. yes. oh, is um, when we, oh, that's all in Hebrew right there. Mm -hmm. um, it was a gift Leah received for leading us through the Tree of Life when we did the Tree of Life series. And it comes, you forgot your headpiece. I know it's in the bag. <sighs> Want me to go grab it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I forget what the word said on that tree of life. I don't remember either. Tree of life. I should know that, but I don't. Oh, I should too. <laughs> Leah, you are embarking on a two year course of study in the Lay School of Ministry of the Northwest Synod of Wisconsin. The Lay School of Ministry was established to prepare theologically articulate laypersons for ministry and service in the church and in the world. This process of preparation tends to draw upon the resources and partnership existing between our synod, this congregation, and the lay school. Will you be diligent in your study and faithful in your use of the means of grace and in prayer? Respond with yes, with God's help. Yes, with God's help. And Mark's help. And Mark's help. And Kelly's help. <laughs> Definitely. Will you trust in God's care, seek to grow in love, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of God with a godly life? Yes, yes with, with God's, God's help. help. This is a prayer shawl, by the way. I forgot to mention that. To the congregation, will you encourage, support, and pray for Leah during this time of study and formation for service in the church and in the world? Please respond with, we will. We will. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you call all your baptized people to service in the church and in the world. Grant Leah grace and strength that she may study diligently and serve you faithfully to the glory of your name through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Leah. You're on the way. Receive the benediction. I invite you to follow along as found in your bulletin. So now we leave this space of worship, and while so much of the road ahead is still uncertain, we know some things that are solid and sure as the ground beneath our feet and the sky above our heads. We know God is love. We know Christ's light endures. We know the Holy Spirit is here, closer to us than our next breath, binding us to each other. Until we meet again, go in peace. Go in peace. So Leo, is this really cool? I just realized, seeing the screen here, that um, our online congregation has sent their we wills too. Yeah. 
pretty cool. Be well in Christ. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. And we will sing now our sending song, Go, My Children, With My Blessing, uh, found in your hymnal 543. <laughs> 